Good morning. Today we will take a short story. It's a science fiction uh, entitled As All Summer Day. Let us start by watching a video. This is a story about a girl named Marge who lives on the Venus of a rainy planet that has been colonized by Earth. This is a story about a girl named Margo who lives on Venus, a rainy planet that has been colonized by Earth. She is at school and the entire class is waiting to see the sun for the first time in seven years. Most of them cannot remember the sun, but since Margot grew up on Earth, she remembers. The kids bully Margot and look her in a closet. Then it stops raining and the sun comes out. All, the, all of the children play and enjoy the sun for a while. Eventually, the sun goes away and the rain starts again. However, the children forget that they had locked Margot in the closet. In the end, the children let Margot out of the closet. For Margot, the theme of escape follows her. First, she wants to escape Venus and go back to Earth especially because she knows that there is a greater way of life out there that her uh, present company cannot understand. And second, she wants to desperately escape the closet, but is locked in her by her classmates. In both cases, her attempts of escape are hindered by her peers. Today, rain is often described as soothing, but in the story, the sound of rain is an almost deafening, monotonous buzz.
So let's start teaching. <clears throat> As you have watched in, uh, in the video, the action takes place on the rainy planet Venus. So Venus is what? The story is a futuristic society. Why? Why? From Earth, because man moved from Earth to another planet, which is Venus. So elements of science fiction and fantasy are manifested clearly in Old Summer Day. What are these elements? We have a blend of realistic and fantastic details. Real human beings in real human forms, but they live in a different planet. Grounded in science. So futuristic or science fiction movies, uh, stories, we have such a scientific, some scientific details about the life. Like what? They have a sun lamp instead of a real sun. You get my point? Unknown inventions. Maybe you uh, uh, get encountered with uh, 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 some new uh, innovations and inventions you are not acquainted with the, uh, uh, on Earth. Makes a serious comment about the world. So most of science fiction movies, poems, short stories are dystopic. What, what we mean by a dystopia? the opposite of utopia, because life on this rainy planet Venus is not a utopian uh, life. It is not desirable. It's full of problems and difficulty. It's a harsh life, especially for Margot. A warning for humankind. What is the, a warning, uh, the message, the implied message of the story? Are people going to be happy on planet Venus? If, uh, this is a very damn gloomy prediction about human life, maybe 20, 50 years. Science fiction settings. We have a story in a different planet, a life on a different planet. Maybe under oceans. <laughs> um, this is another dimension of existence, a different life. Maybe utopia, maybe dystopia, but most of futuristic. Stories, dystopia. Future, travel to the past or to the future. Take place in present, all alternate reality. Alternate reality means a parallel world, a different, like Alice in Wonderland. She entered an alternate reality. We have protagonist, which is Margot in our story. We have antagonist, who, William and the rest of the children. The characters may be a human, may be a symbolic force, may be a, a roaring sea, a volcano. The characters may be alien creatures, robots, machines. Conflict centered are, um, around the society's laws, disease, or problem, or other problems like technology. Why science is very important to the story? Because it discusses these topics, genetics, disease, exploration, scientific problems, advanced technology. Are these a blessing or a curse to human life? Technology is a blessing or a curse? Both, double aged, yes. Elements of fantasy, supernatural, shape-shifting. What we mean by shape-shifting? to change the form from a, a dragon to a boy, then to a girl, a mythical element. The eternal conflict between good and evil. So is the purpose of the author to entertain only? No. This topic fiction is a critique of the current social 
e cultural, economic, technological problems. It depicts the crisis of the modern man. F so fantasy settings, a magical word, a parallel word, like what, like who's like that of Alice in Wonderland. Characters may include witches, wizards, magicians, talking animals, unicorn, monsters, elves, beasts, vampires, and the eternal conflict till doomsday is between good and evil. Sometimes the two genres overlap, which two types, science fiction and fantasy. You can have, have fantasy alone, you can have science fiction alone, but most of the time they are intermingled. So what is fantasy? Fantasy is not the impossible. Fantasy is the possible within its own logics. You get, fantasy is possible, possible in the alternate world. You get my point? So our author today is Bray Bradbury, the author of All Summer in a Day. The genre is science fiction. The setting is Venus, first published in 1959. This is a modern uh, literature after the Second World War. In his own words, a quote by the author himself, people call a science fiction writer, call me a science fiction writer, but I don't think that's quite true. I think that I'm a magician who is capable of making things appear and disappear right in front of you and you don't know how it happens. So, what makes all summer day science fiction story? Huh? It takes place on planet. rainy planet Venus, huh? Yes, is it possible to have uh, uh, rainy weather for seven years? The first element is that the action takes place on Venus. Colonized by rockets from Earth to uh, from Earth, the generation before. So Margot and the kids belong to the second generation. What makes this story CP is that it rains for seven years successively. They live on the planet and they can go into the space without spacesuits and their bodies are not damaged in any way. Real human beings. Underground city. Why underground city? To avoid the rain. Sun lamps, artificial sun. They don't have the natural sun, we know. So our responses to the story, you like it or do you like it? Do you prefer having such a life on a different planet, years coming or not? The story, of course, is very interesting and crazy at the same time. Do you like such a craziness? Are, are you into this atmosphere? Yes, answer me. Do you like to have uh, such an experience to take the risk? You are, all of you are crazy. Fine. It would be dreary all the time, and some people might have depression. Rainy, cloudy, and windy weather cause depression to some people. Some kids cannot connect to Margo. Why? She is different in what sense? She has the ability to remember which they lack. She has nostalgia to something they don't have. So, the dominant literary element in this story is the, the setting. The setting is the real protagonist of the story. The setting causes the conflict. The setting is responsible for Margot's inner conflict. 
So the setting of the story, it is not only for decorative purposes. It is functional. The setting is functional and central to the conflict. In other stories, setting is very important and develops a mood, an atmosphere. So what is the dominant mood and atmosphere in a whole summer day? A gloomy mood. Pessimistic. So, all summer and a day, the sitting takes place on the planet Venus. On Venus, it rains for seven years on end. After seven years, the sun comes out only for an hour. During this time, kids go in, out into the jungle from the underground tunnel. On Venus, it rains for seven years, then it stops for an hour and starts back up again. Have you ever felt that you are unfit? Unfit in a place, unfit in, uh, in your home, unfit at school, unfit at university? Or you have the ability to adapt? Do you feel unfit? I know. How you handle this case? When you feel unfit or uh, not belonging to a place, Supposedly, you should belong to. Huh? In what sense? All of you suffer from this problem? No. So, agree or disagree? The weather has an effect on people's moods? Agree. It is easier to fit in if you do. If you, do, if you do what everyone else is doing, you have to be alert to yourself. You are not obliged to do what others do. In the future, humans will be able to live on other planets. You don't predict. You don't have such a, a crazy prediction. Okay. If I, it were possible to go to another planet, I would go? You like to take the risk yes, yeah. to enjoy a different experience? Yes. All of you? MashaAllah. Mm -hmm. All summer and a day? It's a speculative fiction. What we mean by speculative? <coughs> to speculate, to mediate. To speculate, what we mean? <coughs> Not speculate, and to have uh, inner self-reflection. It's all about Margot's inner workings. Story grammar. So the exposition is what? The exhibition of the story. Huh? Tell me. We are introduced to Venus and to Margot as a girl, girl with a uh, uh, weak body. And the repetition of stood apart. Stood apart is repeated throughout the whole story to indicate and imply what? Her alienation, estrangement, detachment, she doesn't fit in. Rising action. When William starts attacking her verbally and physically, he gives her many pushes. Climax, when she is locked in the closet and when the brain stops. What about rising action? Sorry, falling action. The children in the jungle enjoy the sun. Resolution, they felt guilty and they unlock Margot. Again, exposition, explaining. The opening of the story begins when Margot and her classmates are introduced. Margot stood apart from them, repeated, from these children who could never remember a time when there wasn't rain and rain and rain. It's a quote from the story. Initial characters, Margot. How she looks, sad, lonely, unpleasant. We have the teacher. She is trying to contain the girl 
to be uh, uh, friendly, but William, mean, rude, inconsiderate, racist. He is racist. He attacks Marco because she is different. Margot has not taken well to her new home, doesn't fit in. She is frail, quiet, play, as if the rain had washed out Caesar metaphoric uh, language, as if uh, the rain had washed out the blue from her eyes, pale eyes, pale blue, and the red from her mouth, and the yellow from her hair, a ghost. It's a metaphor implies that she is a ghost. Lately, she has begun to panic at the touch of water. Even she cannot enjoy her shower. Rising action. Teasing and pulling Margot by William. What we mean by Polly? Pulling means what? Tanamur. Attacking her physically and her classmates take his sides. As the two hour summer approached, the school children read and write short stories about the sun. Only Margot feels happy when um, she takes a lesson about the sun, when she writes a poem about the sun, when she writes a story about the sun. A boy, William, is the antagonist here in the story claiming that she hasn't written anything and she has uh, not the ability to remember anything. He is jealous. How would you describe the sun to people who had never seen it? She tries to illustrate the sun. It could be a penny, a coin, it could be a fire on a stove, a lemon. What if they didn't believe you? How could you react? You are lying, you don't remember. It's like a fire in the stove. Teasing her. Attacking her verbally and physically. Classmates get angry at Margot because she says, the sun is like a penny, like a fire in the stove. Classmates surround Margot. He sees her and lock her in the closet. This is typical torment for Margot. The other ch children tend to tease her or, or avoid her because they envy her. She has a memory on earth. So what her parents decide to do? to take her back to earth. And they will lose a huge amount. So life on Venus, not cheaper, he gains money. He makes more money on Venus than on earth. Is Margot responsible for such a rude behavior because she no she partially she is responsible because she uh, on purpose isolates herself she isolates herself detaches herself she is partially responsible for the rude behavior For Margot, life on Venus is all about unpurple and the sun is all important and she makes no secret of these feelings. The climax, when Margot's classmates lock her in the closet and when the rain stops for the first time in seven years. The sun comes out flooding the sky and jungle with the radiant light. Jun jungle is revealed as a joyous tangle of flesh like weed. See? See the metaphor? What is weed? Yes. Resembling a nest of octopi. What is octopi? Octopus. The 
following action is when Margot's classmates finally let her out of the closet. They stand frozen in a place. Why? They feel guilty. They now share this emotional understanding of Margot's a painful nostalgia. Now they see the sun and they enjoyed its warmth. They now have a memory of the sun. Experiencing the sun has not only made them feel happy and healthy, but given them the experience and maturity to realize Margot's love for the sun and to feel the magnitude of their bad, rude action. So, at the end of the story, who has developed moral psychological growth? Margot or William and the rest of the kids? William and the rest of the kids. So they are dynamic characters in the fiction. This is another way that the importance of nature is emphasized. To have a natural life, not an artificial one. So life in Venus is not a good thing. It's a dystopia. Life on Earth is much better. This is implied in the underlying message of the author. The absence of sunlight had turned Venus into an inhospitable wasteland. And this undesirable uh, place uh, creates rude, cruel, weak, racist children who cannot accept tolerance. Now, outside they are joyful and energized, suggesting the power of the sun to bring physical and mental health. Bradbury doesn't show us the aftermath of this episode. Can you expect the rest of the story? I mean, William and the rest of the children will attempt to befriend Margot, to treat her in a better way, to impress and contain her. The children like Margot are now armed with a powerful memory of happiness. Margot has experienced the shattering disappointment of expectations. She is expecting the sun according to the prediction of the broadcast of the scientist, but unfortunately she is deprived of such joyousness. Uh, So, the rainy planet Venus is a futuristic setting and a dystopia. Dystopia is the opposite of utopia. It is not the ideal city. Why? Why? Huh? Lack of a physical and mental health. Lack of natural, normal life. It's a racist society that doesn't accept tolerance or deference. What else? Physically training effect on Margot. She is pale like a ghost. This rainy planet, artificial way of life, creates rude, cruel children. The sun has power to make humans both physically and mentally stronger. So setting is what? Time and place. Our first acti activity is to follow the events. Event one, event two, event three. You get my point? 
sequence chart, the structure of the events. The choice of metaphoric expressions, the concussion of storms, a very strong and vivid expression. So this is another chart to sketch a character, giving evidence from the story itself. Description, Margot is weak and pale. Uh, provide your description with a quote from the story itself. Give the action, supply the action from the story itself. She stands alone, for example. Description, she stood alone. The lines from the story itself, she was a very frail girl who looked as if she had been lost in the rain for seven years and the rain had washed out the blue from her eyes and the red from her mouth and the yellow from her hair. Yellow, Margot actions. Green, the description. I need this chart. It's your assignment for the next time to be inserted in your portfolios. I'll explain later. Okay, today we're going to start prepping for a writing activity that will show our understanding of the characters of All Summer and Day by Ray Bradbury. Listen, please. We're going to do a character study, and this is what I want you to do. Sometimes conflicts are caused by the setting of a story. So the setting is responsible for the conflict. You can read. This conflict manifests itself in the children's treatment of Margot. To sketch a character, you have to refer to the setting because setting creates a mood, an atmosphere that dominates the whole story. Look at the chart. It's called character analysis evidence chart. We have Margot, evidence and explanation. You can replace Margot by William and you add your evidence and explanation. The evidence all and all this was because she would play no games. Explain. The way this shows Margot continuing the conflict is that she didn't explain to others. So I'm going to get you a lot of friends and you're not well to put yourself out there and actually participate in what and apply to William too. You have to illustrate her conflict with William, her conflict with the setting itself. William. So the piece of evidence, he pushes her. He gives her a chove. Chove means a push.
How he teases her about the son? He accuses her of being a liar, that she cannot remember anything, she cannot write anything about the son. This is the structure of the table, and if this is your assignment. Let us learn more about Easy. So let us start working on the uh, blackboard. I don't know if I want to start again. Let's do it. Huh? Time and place, huh? Explain time and place in what sense? Supply examples, give evidence. Give evidence that it is a futuristic society. On Venus, number one, yes. What else? Hmm. The city is a. The city is is like what? Underground city. is a once every seven years. All these evidence create a science fiction story. A mix, a blend between science and fantasy. What about the mood? If a first, futuristic society. Second, mood, which is gloomy. So, life of Venus is Why it is a dystopia? Margot's parents moved from Earth to Venus seeking more money. So it is a materialistic society. Second, the people on Venus cannot tolerate differences. It's a racist society. Huh? Why dystopia? Materialistic. Second, racist. Racist society. People on Venus, the first generation, have hateful of human race, are hateful of human race. It is gloomy. Why? 
When it is rainy, uh, uh, the weather is is a uh, dark. Mm. Life of Venus. Can you? Uh, are, are we living on Venus? Do we have a natural sun or artificial sun? Natural sun. Do you live on the ground or beneath the ground? So, this is very important about science fiction setting. I want to make a comparison between Margot and William. Can I clean it is? Antagonist. What about the setting? Is the setting itself antagonist? No, not antagonist. Antagonist to Mardo. The rainy weather is a natural force which creates a problem or a crisis to Mardo. Huh? Dictate me when you want to describe the boy. Huh? Ha! Ah. Cruel? Rude? Ha! Ah. Savage? Hateful? You are a liar. You don't know the sun. You cannot remember the sun. So he is skeptical, shakek. And of course, he is jealous. On a savage, Carlos. Selfish. What about Margot? Frail. Alienated. Depressed. Huh? Introvert, huh? Nostalgic. So the type of conflict we have, internal and external. yes, internal why? Uh, I don't think what we have internal, it's only external. External, character versus society, character versus character. Margot is against this society, Margot is against William and the rest of the children, but it is only external conflict. Versus society, not herself. She doesn't fit in. So, themes. We can say uh, nature, our natural life versus artificial life. Uh, what else? Mm -hmm. 
the major theme racism, polling, materialism, of narration do we have for those who read the story? What is it? First person narration or third person narration? Third person narration. So thank you. That's for today. I hope you enjoyed the story and please do your assignment. Thank you. The Tahzeeb was law. أنا هنبدأ الكويز يا كتاكيت، محدش يتحرر، الكويز جه أهو